Hello to all of you. This is Dr. Tawal Mehta and today we will understand the simple mediation analysis in Smart PLS 4. You can see here that there are three constructs here Y1, Y2 and M. In my previous video, we have already discussed the direct effect that is Y1 affecting Y2 directly. The, the direct effect is denoted by P3. Now it can be another scenario in which Y1 is affecting Y2 through some mediator. So Y1 affecting M, M affecting Y2. So the indirect effect is P1 into P2. Now let us take a very simple layman example that what do I mean by mediation analysis. There is a child Y1 who wants to go on the picnic which requires the approval from the father Y2. Now Y1 can approach the father directly that is a direct effect is Y3. But if he is he feels that the approval is not possible directly he will take a different route and that is Y1 in a, will approach the mother and will try to take uh, or convince the mother first and the mother will take the approval from the father. So here Y1 is taking the route from Y1 to M, M to Y2 and this is known as an indirect effect. Now the total effect will be the combination of the direct effect plus indirect effect. So So, the total effect is direct effect P3, this one, and the indirect effect P1 into P2. Now, there can be different types of mediations. The first is no mediation. Child can take the approval from the father directly and that is no mediation is necessary. And here, the total effect will be equal to C only. The second possibility is that the child is can take the approval from father and at the same time he is taking the root of the mediation or he is taking uh, uh, he is taking the root from the mother child trying to convince mother mother trying to convince the father for the approval of the picnic so here the total effect will be the direct effect c dash plus a into b the third possibility is that a child can never take approval, any approval directly from the father. He has to take always the root of the mother. So A into B, it's an indirect effect. Now, Barron and Kenny had conducted some studies in 1980. And according to them, if direct effect is significant, if C is significant, then only go for indirect effect. If direct effect is insignificant, you should not even calculate the indirect effect. Now, this approach was largely criticized by Professor Hare, Professor Hayes and Professor Chi. And according to them, even if the direct effect is insignificant, then also you should go for estimating the indirect effect. So, according to Chi in 2010, we don't only focus on direct effect. Even if there is no significant direct effect, then also we should check the indirect effect or mediation analysis should be medi mediation analysis should be considered. This is the current methodology which is to be adopted. Now, what can be the different scenarios of the mediation? Let's see one by one. This model is suggested by Zhao et al. 2010 and it is given in the book A Primer on par uh, Partial List Square written by Professor Hare. Professor Halt, Professor Ringel and Professor Sarstedt. We will see the same diagram again, P1, P2 and P3. Is P1, P2 significant? Yes, this means, this one. Is P3 significant? Yes, means this is also significant. Direct, indirect, both are significant. Is P1, P2, P3 positive? All of them are positive. Then it is known as a complementary partial mediation. If any one of them is negative, so no, then it is known as a competitive partial mediation. Now let us go back here. Is P1, P2 significant? Yes. Is P3 significant? No. Means the direct route is not there. Father can, uh, child cannot approach the father directly. 
it means that it is a clear cut case of full mediation indirect only this one this path is p1 p2 significant no is p3 significant yes means indirect effect is completely absent and there is only the direct no mediation is there direct effect is only there the last case Is P1, P2 significant? No. Is P3 significant? No. All of them are insignificant and therefore there is no effect. Now, the mediation can be of serial mediation or a parallel mediation. What's the difference? Let's just take a sa same example. Here, independent variable is affecting mediator variable 1, 2 and dependent variable. Child can approach father directly one path child can approach mother for going to the picnic mother will try to convince the father first part a1 b1 the second part child approaches the grandmother and the grandmother tries to convince the father for the approval of the picnic the second part a2 b2 the third part child approaches the mother Mother tries to convince grandmother, grandmother tries to convince father for the approval to allow the child to go on the picnic. So A1, D2, B2. This is a serial mediation. Now the parallel mediation is a child at the same moment of time is approaching the father directly, is trying to, is trying to take two different indirect routes. One through mother, A1, B1 and another through grandmother. A2, B2. This is a parallel mediation. Now there is one more effect and it is known as a suppressor effect. It is the rarest of rare case. So according to Cheng Lao, if the indirect effect is more than the total effect, then it is known as a suppressor effect. According to them, in such scenario, it is considered to be the full mediation even if the direct effect is insignificant. It is a very rare scenario in which the indirect effect is greater than the total effect. Now how to run this? Let's see in Smart PLS. I will request all my viewers to kindly refer my previous video to understand the flow of entire series. Here job satisfaction, the exogenous variable is affecting the staying intention, organizational commitment is affecting the staying intention, environmental perception of an employee is affecting the staying intention of an employee. Co-workers, behavior of the co-worker worker is affecting the staying intention of an employee. These are all direct effects. Now let us introduce the indirect effect in this model. So I will drag this and now I will connect organizational commitment to the job satisfaction. Now what is a model? Organizational commitment can affect the staying intention of an employee directly or it can take a route. That is organizational commitment affecting the job satisfaction of an employee, job satisfaction affecting the staying intention of an employee. So the indirect route is also there. Then you will go and calculate, do the bootstrapping, make sure that the bias corrected and accelerated bootstrap is on, start the calculation. Open the report. You will get results in path coefficient, total indirect effect, specific indirect effect and total effects. Path coefficient will give you the direct effect. Okay, the direct effect, which is, which is this one. Is it clear? But it will give you five direct effects. One, two, three, four, and five yes this this will also be reported to you you can see here organizational commitment to job satisfaction and job satisfaction to staying intention it will be reported you will have to see the p value of all of them if they are less than 0 0.05 it means that this path coefficients are significant it means that co-worker affecting staying intention yes environmental perception affecting staying intention yes job satisfaction affecting the staying intention yes Organizational commitment affecting the job satisfaction, yes. So p-values are less than 0 
Now I want to see the total indirect effect. You, uh, but before that also see this confidence intervals bias corrected. It should not consist of zero in between. If this interval consists, if the zero is present in between this two interval, it means that this path coefficient is insignificant. So you can say zero is absent here. Positive to positive, we are going. Positive to positive, we are going. And therefore, co-worker, environmental perception, both are significant. But there is a slight element of doubt here. Negative to positive, zero is there. And therefore, it can be insignificant. But let us see the p-value of job satisfaction. Yes, it is less than 0 0.05. So no need to worry. Now, what is the difference in total indirect effect and specific indirect effect? Just click on it. You will get the same value. 0 0.012 and 0 0.012. The only difference between this total indirect effect and specific indirect effect is the specific indirect effect gives the entire path. This will not give the entire path. This will give only OC to SI. This will give me OC to job satisfaction, job satisfaction to staying intention. They both are same, but this will give you the entire path. You can see here the bias corrected also for this. Now, if I see the total indirect effect or specific indirect effect, the interpretation is going to remain same. No need to worry, but this will give me the path. Its p value is more than 0 0.05. It means that this part is insignificant. Okay, as the p-value is more than 0 0.05. Let us try to confirm the same thing by bias corrected. Yes, there is a presence of zero, and therefore we confirm that this root, the indirect root, is not one. Now, how did I got the indirect effect figure, which is this figure 0 0.012? How how the software calculated it? Let us try to understand. It is 0.163. If you don't get the value, it may be possible that you get the p values here only or you may get the t values here. So try to convert this thing into path coefficients and p value and take the path coefficients value. 0.163 into 0 0.072. If you try to recall, our indirect effect was uh, here it is a into b a into b right so let us do this when you multiply 0 0.163 with 0 0.072 you will get 0 0.011 it is 0 0.012 this is the same figure when i round up to the three digit i will get 0 0.012 this is the same thing which i got from here 0 0.012 so this is the indirect effect. Now, what will be the total effect? The total effect will be the addition of the direct effect plus the direct effect plus the indirect effect. So, organizational commitment to staying intention. The direct effect is 0.275 and the indirect effect is 0 0.012. Actually, it is insignificant and therefore nothing will be added. If it was significant, then definitely it would have been added. So 0.275, which is this one, 0.275 into 0 0.012, uh, sorry, 0.275 plus, not into, 0.275 plus 0 0.012 will give me the total effects, which is here. Organizational commitment to staying in touch. It will give me this figure. You can check the p-value from here also and even you can check the confidence interval bias corrected it's zero present no now there is one more thing which you will have to report and that is variance accounted for so variance accounted for gives me the information about the strength of the mediation the formula is the variance accounted for that is the indirect effect divided by the total effect so the indirect effect of organizational commitment to job satisfaction, job satisfaction to staying intention divided by the total effect of organizational commitment to staying intention. So the total effect is the combination of direct effect plus indirect effect. 
So my direct effect was 0.275 and the indirect effect was 0 0.012. You can see from here. So this is 0.275 and the total effect will you will have to consider is 0 0.2 uh, sorry the direct indirect effect is 0 0.012. So, the total effect is the summation of 0.275 plus 0 0.012. So, my variance accounted for is indirect effect. This one, 0 0.012 divided by 0.287, the total effect. I got the answer 4%. The threshold limit of the variance accounted for, according to the author, is if it is 0 to 20%, no mediation effect. 20 to 80 percent partial mediation, above 80 percent full mediation. So here VAF is 4 percent, so no mediation is present. The condition to repair VAF is that the total effect, this should be at least 20 percent, then only we will report VAF. Now how to report the result of mediation in your paper? You will have to specify the relationship, the direct effect, the indirect effect, the total effect. VAF, the bias confidence interval, the lower one and the upper one. Now, it can be also possible that there are multiple mediations at the same moment of time. So, how we will do that? So, for this, I will connect 1. Now, the new feature of Smart PLS 4 consists of that as soon as you connect it, you don't require to run bootstrap again and again. It will give you the estimates directly. So, now we are considering two more mediations. Let us check them also. So, we will go in open report. First thing which you should see the path coefficients. Are they significant? Now, here these are insignificant. Co-workers to job satisfaction are insignificant. Co-worker to job satisfaction. So this is insignificant. It means that this one. It means that indirect effect is insignificant. This route is already insignificant. Yes, I am seeing in path coefficient. I agree. But uh, for indirect effect to be significant, this should be significant. Now you can go in specific indirect effect and click here. You can see all of them, all the paths are insignificant as the p-value of all of them is more than 0 0.05. Right? All of them is, p-value of all of them is more than 0 0.05. This we can further confirm by confidence intervals bias corrected and you will see 0 is present in all of them. And therefore, the mediation is insignificant. Okay. So, for more videos on Smart PLS, kindly subscribe to my channel. You can refer my playlist in which I have already uploaded many videos which are related to Smart PLS. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and press the like button. You can also follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter. Thank you.